the next slide will say Homily. Resurrection business from death to life. Today is Easter Sunday, we all know that. It's the birthday of what I would call ultimate resurrection. Now I looked up a definition for resurrection this week and it gave me two, um, uh, two different answers. The first is, it is the rising of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the second answer it gives is the rising of the dead but the last judgment. So two very different things. First, uh, Jesus rising from the dead and then, of course, um, those who are dead in Christ rising at the last judgment. So both of these things are spiritual resurrections. They're two very different things, but they're inextricably linked. Both are a change of state from being dead to being alive once more. You see, the scriptures, the Holy Bible teaches us actually a number of things about resurrection. There is also, firstly, what I would call physical resurrection. It was interesting at the prayer breakfast this morning that Jim Thompson, who led the prayer breakfast, spoke about the resurrection of Lazarus. And it's in John chapter 11, and it's a good example of physical resurrection. Let me just give you a wee recap on the story, because we've not read it this morning. Lazarus is the brother of Martha and Mary, and he's sick. And of course, we're told the scriptures that Jesus deeply loved each and every one of these three siblings. So when their brother was sick, the sisters said Jesus' word. They were actually very deeply worried that Lazarus might die unless, unless Jesus would come and heal him. But Jesus didn't come immediately. The Bible tells us it's because he knew that God was going to reveal something very important about resurrection when he eventually did decide to visit them. So after four days, Jesus finally arrives knowing that Lazarus has already died. Mary and Martha are both filled with grief, as you can imagine. And to be honest, I suspect they were a bit hurt that Jesus had not come much sooner. There are other mourners gathered there too, as was the custom. They were weeping and wailing. And both the sisters came to meet Jesus before he just got to them. And they came independently. And they both said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. To Martha, Jesus replies, your brother will rise again. And Martha replies, I know that he will arise again at the resurrection at the last day. And then Jesus said something very important to her. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. There were some there that day who questioned Jesus accusingly. Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this dear man Lazarus from dying? Verse 37 of that chapter. But in verse 39, Martha suggests that after four days, the body is going to smell a bit obnoxious. But in verse 40, Jesus says, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? And in verse 43, Jesus speaks to the dead man, Lazarus, and he shouts, Lazarus, come out from the grave. And we're told that he does. He comes out and Jesus finally concludes by telling the folks there, take the grave clothes off and let him go. So Lazarus then is a, an example of physical resurrection. And it was an event that was used to inform us 
that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And if we believe in him, we will live after we die on earth and be with him in heaven for all eternity. That belief in Jesus, the resurrection, is also connected to the spiritual resurrection, not just a physical one. Again, the scriptures many times tell us about spiritual resurrections. I was thinking as I was preparing about the story of Zacchaeus. Remember Zacchaeus, the wee guy, greedy, materialistic, tax collector, greedy for a worldly gain. But when he encounters Jesus, he is resurrected spiritually. He's transformed and he's assured that he will be with Jesus in heaven. His life's so transformed, he decides to start paying back four times uh, to the people that he's cheated in life and so on. His life was never the same again. A spiritual encounter with Jesus means resurrection. So Jesus is in what I would call the resurrection business. He transforms people who are dead spiritually and he brings them to life. It should be no surprise to us after the horrors of Good Friday that Jesus does not stay dead. A wee quick recap on Good Friday. It was the day after Jesus had been arrested and on it he was sentenced to death. He was crucified. He had a spear thrust into his side just to be doubly sure that he was definitely dead. Then they wrapped him in grave clothes and buried him in the tomb that Joseph of Arimathea had provided. And it's now on Easter Sunday that we arrive at John chapter 20. His body is not in the tomb where they laid him. And it's not been stolen either. Some women and men arrive at the tomb and find the tomb's empty, except for the grave clothes. Mary Magdalene was the first. She's most probably the same Mary from Bethany, who was Lazarus, his sister. Remember, she was weeping when her brother had died. And here she's weeping again because when she had loved dearly, Jesus had died too. Mary Magdalene's the one who brought the expensive myrrh perfume or nard as it's sometimes called. And she anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The dead Jesus that was there is alive once more. She sees two angels and they ask her why well, she's crying and she replies, they've taken away my Lord and I don't know where they put him. Then she suddenly realizes she's not alone and she presumes the man's the gardener but it is the resurrected Jesus and she appeals to him Tell me where you've taken the body of the Lord Jesus. Then he just simply speaks her name, Mary. And that voice resonates and she cries out that word. It means teacher, Rabboni. And they're suddenly reacquainted. What an amazing encounter for Mary. She had that sort of experience when her brother came back to life, but this, this is bigger and greater. Encountering Jesus has had that effect. And she wants to tell others. <coughs> and that's what Jesus urges her to go and do. She goes looking for the disciples to give them the great news that Jesus is alive. 
just like he said he would. Way back at the start of John's Gospel, chapter 2 and verse 19, Jesus sent out this message, destroy this temple. Remember, he speaks about the body being a temple. And in three days, I will build it again. A metaphor for when you kill me, after three days, I will be resurrected back to life. And in Mark 9, verses 30 to 32, Jesus said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men, Son of Man being himself. They will kill him, and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant at that time. So we're at Easter Day, and it is a day to celebrate Jesus' resurrection. He's transformed from death to life once more. It's also a day when Christians celebrate their own encounter with Jesus and how he has transformed them from not comprehending the reason why Jesus came from, to earth from heaven to suddenly understanding that Jesus offers them life as a living sacrifice for all who believe in him. It's good news for all our sins are forgiven. Not just the ones in the past or the ones that we were facing in the present, but the ones that we will still commit in the future. For Jesus' work on the cross is finished and sin and death are defeated for those who invite Jesus to be their Lord and Saviour. Once anyone encounters the Lord Jesus in such a way, something really special happens within their heart and mind and soul. This Jesus is the one that Luke speaks of in Acts 2. This Jesus goes that God has raised up from the dead to life, and we are all witnesses of this fact. In the early verses of Acts, Luke tells us that more than 500 people encountered Jesus after he has been resurrected from the grave. This Jesus is still in the same resurrection business today. He may still resurrect people physically. I don't think he does it very often these days. But he definitely still resurrects people spiritually. And he does that a lot more frequently. And best of all, it's freely available to anyone, to anyone who seeks him with all their heart. He promises you will find me. There is nothing, nothing else in life that can transform a life like encountering Jesus. And Jesus is with us today. And he asks us, will today be a day when you encounter me? Just like Zacchaeus, just like Mary Magdalene and many others, just like a number of us here in church who have shared our own testimony of encountering Jesus. Our own spiritual resurrection. Jesus asks us, are any of us like Mary and Jesus' other disciples where we don't quite fully understand or comprehend his words and his teaching? He invites us to journey with him, to find greater understanding and to grow in our love for the one who laid down his life for you and for me. Maybe you know some of the ones who are not here in this chapter or in this service today. Maybe you're aware of them because they matter to you. I wonder if you'll be like Mary and go quickly and share the amazing great news of resurrection so that they too might believe in the one who is the resurrection and the life. 
Well, that's what we do when we have this spiritual resurrection. We want to share it with others. We don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want others to have this encounter too. Mary loved the Lord Jesus very, very deeply because he forgave all of her sins. He took away all her shame and he stood her up on her feet and she changed from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. I hope and pray that you know this resurrection. And I wonder if you join with me in prayer now. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, long-awaited Messiah, the one who is the resurrection and the life eternal, to you we bow our heads and our hearts on this day which proclaims your resurrection. Though we lack adequate words to speak of your sacrifice, which has paid the full price for all that would separate us from God. Our many sins, our wrong desires, our foolish aspirations after material things, our inaction when we should have acted, our lack of zeal, our willingness to share the gospel when opportunities arise. Help us to Put our full trust in you this day. Help us to encounter you in a fresh, transformational way. Help us to proclaim your offer to all we can in our life in this earth. By your grace, save and transform many souls that will know this resurrection too. Transform from spiritual ignorance to spiritual joy-filled gladness. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Come and build your church. Come and build your kingdom amongst us. Be our good teacher, Rabboni, and teach us the mysteries of the Holy Scriptures so that we understand and live our lives for your glory and in this transformed way that you impart upon us. We ask these things in the name that is above every other name, Jesus, our Saviour, the Christ. Amen. Closing hymn.